From what we see in the literature, it seems that we, um, uh, mobilization is a key component of uh, early uh, enhanced recovery. And uh, often it's, uh, uh, it's associated with uh, proper pain control. So my question here is, um, do we have an objective uh, metric to meet on, on uh, for example, a score on the visual analog scale, or is it just uh, uh, the daily uh, activities that will guide to say we're successful or not regarding pain control? Yeah. This is an important question. Um, if you have insufficient pain management, you can never have a successful errors program. So pain control is in the very, very center. Um, it has been advocated and is right that we have to measure pain in our surgical patients. But to measure it is not enough because the next question is even more important. Are you active? Are you mobilized? And if not, is it because of pain or something else? So it's measurement of pain and then to ask, does pain influence your activity? So that's the ultimate goal, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And to be able to, um, to uh, control the pain post-op, uh, years ago, the surgeries were more invasive, so uh, thoracic epidural analgesia was uh, one of the key uh, uh, instruments in for anesthesiologist. Nowadays, uh, what is your impression on the thoracic epidural analgesia versus the pain control analgesia or regional anesthesia? Any of these modalities, are they all the same if uh, pain is controlled or there's uh, uh, some differences? No, the, the, the regional analgesic or regional anesthetic techniques are in fact the most powerful pain treatment. But that's not the same as to say that we need them in every type of surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, in the major upper abdominal procedures, a thoracic epidural anesthesia is still the most important. If it is an open operation, if it is an, a laparoscopic operation, uh, the pain stimulus is smaller and we don't need the thoracic epidural. So the, the type of analgesia depends on the type of the surgical procedure. And we have so many other analgesics that we can play with and combine uh, that provide sufficient analgesia in every type of surgery. So pain control being a, um, a key component from what I see regarding mobilization and the success of uh, ERAs, uh, the, uh, something else that does in, uh, uh, limit patients from being mobilized is all the tubes that they have, so nasogastric tube, Foley catheter, and so on. So do you, what is your, uh, um, your um, impression or your uh, uh, word of advice regarding the nasogastric tube and uh, Foley catheter or any other inwelling uh, catheter? That's one of the basic questions to have a faster recovery. That's to avoid everything that the patient is connected to and can see something coming out of their body because then they get a fright. Uh, is it yellow? Is it blood? Is it green or whatever? So the basic principle of errors from the very beginning was no nasogastric tubes. And that was the evidence, shouldn't use it. Mm -hmm. Foley catheters no in most operations. Uh, drains, no. So all these old-fashioned principles, they must be revised and adjusted to scientific evidence. And there's still a, a few major operations where you may have a drain for 24 hours or so. And what did you use to try to, this is a culture basically, yeah. to enhance a new culture, uh, how did you proceed? to uh, make sure that the old-fashioned way will uh, be uh, retired to new practices? Oh. Oh, it's not only about culture, it's first of all about science, scientific documentation mm -hmm. that you don't need all these things. We have, to, we have to remember that when nasogastric tubes were introduced and drains, etc. It was rational at that time, mm -hmm. but history has shown that uh, it is not necessary.